Good Thursday morning. We have had a week with no Boomer. We are here on Thursday. I've been promoting it every single day this week. This is something that almost happened three years ago. It is happening now, and nobody is happier about it than Barrett Sports Media. And that is <laughs> my co-host today, the great John Stugatz Wiener, with me for Thursday and Friday, of course, of the world-famous Dan Levitard Show, and a man who loves WFAN as much as anybody on the planet. He hosted one show many, many years ago when I think he probably had some pictures on Mark Chernoff. He is here again, a couple days, morning drive, filling in for Boomer. John, good morning. What's happening, man? What's up, Gio? I got to tell you, this is the height of entertainment right now, okay? I've been waiting for an adapter for about five minutes. Thank you to Al Dukes for getting me one, all right? I asked you guys for a bottle of water. There is no water. I have a styrofoam cup, okay? (laughs) Like, what is happening here? I told you right before we started, it looks a lot better on TV. Oh, yeah. No, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, this is, this is, you've been around radio a long time. Yep. The fact that you're surprised we don't have bottles of water around (laughs) here is on you, man. Come on. I mean, me and Levitar have a kitchen. (laughs) I mean, there's Tupperware in there. (laughs) <laughs> I mean, Jesus. <laughs> yeah. And by the way, don't look up until that water filter thing. It's all like gross and really? filter. Oh, it's disgusting. If Thanks. you look, don't just. So yeah. now enjoy that cup of water. I, <laughs> I appreciate so it. So when you, when you grew up in Port Washington listening to Mike <laughs> and the Mad Dog. And then you found out that they were working in the sub basement of Kaufman Astoria Studios. In it Queens. was disappointing. Yeah, yeah it was, <laughs> that's where you're headed. Yeah. yeah, it was a little disappointing. And now all these years later, you come in here. It's a little disappointing. It is. I got to be honest with you. Like, listen, I realize where I am. Yeah. I realize the piece of of radio real estate that you occupy with Boomer every <laughs> single morning. Yeah. Uh, I am flattered. I am honored to be here. And thank you to you for for making this happen. Oh, oh, a bottle of water. Look at that. Oh, that. Al, listen, I don't know what it's like when Boomer's here, okay? But these two days, going to be... Al, someone drank out of this bottle. I mean, this is... This is somebody... Al! Like, uh, Spike, I, Spike gave that to me. Okay, I, I imagine when Boomer's here, it's like Tom Coughlin. You got to show up 15 minutes early to oh, every yeah. meeting. Yep. You know, everything's very regimented. Sure. The next two days, guys, just have fun, all right? Because I don't care about any of this. That looks I mean, like it was in Spike's gym bag for a long time. <laughs> this is unbelievable. <laughs> and, you know, now I'm, I'm stuck here with this bottle of water that someone has taken a sip out. of. you want yep. this? No, 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 you, no. You no, need no. some water? No, no, no. <laughs> or I have a styrofoam cup, which has a dirty filter. <laughs> I, <laughs> well, well, about uh, 7 o'clock, we get our digital guy in here, maybe 7.30 if he's feeling uh, frisky. Yeah, and he'll go down. To eight, closer right. to 8. Closer to 8 now. Well, that's okay. nice of him. Yeah. Closer to 8, yeah. and uh, he will get you whatever you need in two hours. How's that sound? Uh, it sounds great. I can't wait till people start waking up and actually arriving. Um, I'll never be able to get used to this. Yeah. I, I, I just... It's tough, man. I wonder how you do it because I spent the entire evening. I, I haven't done this in years, man. You did mornings for a year, though, right? I did mornings for a year. Uh, but here's the difference. When I did mornings, I wasn't driving the show. It wasn't really my show. And I knew the show that we were doing, it didn't feel good. Yeah. And it wasn't good. So it made getting out of bed very difficult. At least with you and Booms. You're getting out of bed knowing top-rated show, WFAN, and you personally are living at your dream every single day. Yep. That makes it easier to get here at 5.15 in the morning. (laughs) Yeah, most of the time. Right. I mean, still in those, like, February mornings where there's nothing going on in sports and it's 15 degrees out and I'm (laughs) scraping the ice off my car. Doesn't feel like a dream at that point. But, yes, when I get in here and we're talking and and doing our thing, absolutely. But you you get – I don't want to say you get used to it. You just learn how to cope with it. Right. And I – when I – was out of shape like a year ago. I was like 50 pounds heavier. I was I was miserable. I felt like crap. I couldn't sleep. I had sleep apnea. And then I figured, let me lose some weight and get healthy. And it's made it a hell of a lot easier. Like I felt like getting five hours of sleep now at night, I feel great as opposed to, you know, when I was waking up every five seconds, I couldn't breathe and I was choking on my own spit in the middle of the night because I was so out of shape. That was not good. Look, we have a we have a very large man doing overnights now. His name's Chris McMonagle. Right. And Spike came in here and said that if he doesn't lose some weight with those hours, he will die. That's what he said. But how is he supposed to lose weight when he's working from two to six in the morning? Hey, you got to like, figure it out. What is he man. supposed to do with the rest of his day? You expect him to hit the gym after that? Yes. <laughs> like what? You go. Well, first of all, it's all about the the food consumption. It's all about that. So he'll you know 
get a little sleep when you get back. You wake up, you take right. a walk, something, whatever. You got to figure it out. But to your point, these hours, if you're not paying attention to what you're doing, is going to aid you very, very quickly. Yeah, I have a theory on, on morning radio and morning radio hosts. I think they age at a more rapid pace than U.S. presidents. <laughs> Oh, how about Inus? Oh, my God. I mean, it's unbelievable. I have a friend who did mornings for five years. He aged at a in a way, like, more rapidly than Obama did when he was in office for eight years, okay? <laughs> like, he was 30 years old. He looked like he was 51. Then yeah. he stopped doing mornings, okay? Yep. And two years later, he looks 35 again. I mean, the life is back in his face. The color is back in his face. I, it's It's unbelievable. How you guys are able to do this and then be expected to go be a parent after this or be yeah. a husband after this right. or go play golf like Beningo, <laughs> yeah. who was dressed like he was a member at Augusta the last day. <laughs> I mean, it's unbelievable. What has happened to Joe? I don't know, man. He was a guy that he, first of all, years and years ago, he hated golf. Jerry wanted to get him involved in golf. He's no way, bro. I'm never doing it. It's for a bunch of, uh, you know, <laughs> yuppies play golf. I'm not a yuppie. And he would come in with these tattered T-shirts, tattered jeans, didn't want to do it. Now, all of a sudden, you're right. I mean, he shows up here looking like Stuart Sink yesterday. (laughs) (laughs) He's like, I'm playing here, I'm playing here, bro, I'm here. Uh, So, anyway, you you had Dog on the other day. Yeah. And you're interviewing Christopher Mad Dog Russo, and you're asking him for advice on doing this show and working with me. Mm -hmm. So, he starts going into all of these things. Like, his mind goes, like, right back to, like, 1997. Right, right? yeah. So he's like, all right, let me see. What do you have? We got uh, Yankees, Astros. All right, you got that. There's going to be a big series. Uh, <laughs> Mets are done. Trade deadline. You got, uh, Rogers and the Jets. You got to have that. All right. It's like, all right, dog. <laughs> like, we understand what's going on. But then you say, well, what about, you know, working with Gio? And he's like, all right, uh, big Mets fan, big Vikings fan, <laughs> loves to gamble. This is what he says. <laughs> loves to gamble. All right. Now, these guys know me pretty well. I am not a gambler. Like, I bet on sports occasionally a right. little bit during football season. I am not a gambler. So where does he get this from? I'll tell you where he gets this from, a story that I probably told once or twice in the last five years. So he used to have this thing called the family in the newsroom. Mm-hmm. Are you part of the family? Are right. you in or are you out? Mm-hmm. So him and Mike and Eddie Erickson and Sal Licata, we used to all bet on the total runs, hits, and errors in a day baseball game. Right. All right, so this is what they would do. So Dog would call his bookie. He would put like three grand on it, and we could take whatever piece we wanted out of it. So I'm making... Wait, so Dog's betting three grand. You could take, hey, I'll take a hundred of that. You, that's what you think, right? Okay, right. So I'm making... If you lose, you got to pay. If you win... Yeah, well, we'll see. <laughs> so I'm making legitimately, at that time, producing middays, $31,000 a year living in New York City. So right. I've got no money. Gotcha. Absolutely no money. Mm-hmm. So he's like, all right, Cubs, Brewers, total run sits in there is 24 and a half. We're going over today. Are you in or are you out? And I'm like, dog, I, you know, this is... You love dog. He was like one yeah. of your idols as well Mm -hmm. so he's pressuring me like dog i I can't i can't do it man i can't i just don't have the money oh come on oh he's not part of the family (laughs) oh i guess he's not part of the family you know doing all this crap so i'm like all right fine i'm in for 50 bucks he goes no 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 no. 50 dollars 50 dollars 250 or more 250 is the limit (laughs) 250 I'm like 250 bucks I'm like no way man I was like I, I, there's no way I could do this all right Giannotti's out he's out we're all in and he's out and then he'd do this thing this is why I am in there and you are out here right but he knows you're out here he knows how much you make yet he still wants 250 of your dollars exactly yeah, so exactly. then so then it's classic what happens? doggy right there I go all right I am I'm, I'm in and he goes all right baby he's in he's in loss Next day, don't worry, we'll get it back. <laughs> Next day, loss. Boom. Next day, loss. Boom. Chasing. I am now down $1,100 to dog and his bookie. All right? <laughs> so I come in with a check. <laughs> I said, I'm just going to pay him. I'm just going to bite the bullet. I'm not going to chase him. I'm just going to bite the bullet and give him the money. So I get stopped by Eddie Erickson He's producing the show. As I walk in, he goes, you paying dog today? I said, yeah, I planned on it. He goes, Listen, his bookie got shut down by the cops. He goes, you don't need to pay him. And I'm like, get out of here, really? <laughs> He's like, yeah, don't worry about it. I don't hear a thing from Dog. Nothing. Months go by. He leaves for serious. Mm-hmm. $15 million contract. Right. right. 
Nobody's heard from him for months. Right. I'm thinking I'm in the clear, whatever. Get a phone call to the newsroom about six months later. You're kidding me. Who picks it up is Chris Lepresti. <laughs> he goes, hey, uh, Gio, it's dog for you. I said, no, it's not. No one's heard from him. He left. He's persona non grata. Everybody hates his guts around here. It's not him. It's probably Mike from Mayapak doing a dog. He's like, no, it's it's dog. Like, it's his number here. It's dog. Transfers over. Newsroom, Greg. Uh, hey, listen, Greg, you, you owe me $1,100 when it runs, hits, and errors bet. <laughs> I had a bad weekend at college football. Anything you can give me. I'm like, what? You're making $15 million. Uh, what? The, the, the chutz are part of do that. <laughs> And I swear to God, he probably still has an index card with yeah. my name on it and that debt. Right. And I don't know if that bookie cop story was true or not. I don't know. Because if it was, then, like, I really didn't owe him that money. And they put this through somebody else who was trying to get it. I don't know. So the point of the story is that when his memory now, when you're asking him about me, mm -hmm. he goes, loves to gamble. Right. Yes. Yeah. Actually, no, I don't. <laughs> you forced me to gamble. Yeah, right. You peer pressured me into the loves Greg to Giannotti. gamble my ass. Are you kidding me? I hate it now because of you. Uh, so anyway, that guy is just. Dog a, is always talking like he's doing a show on WFAN. Oh, yeah, of course. He, he yeah. is, right? Yeah. Every you day. know, the two of you, early August, ah, it's going to be a love fest. Uh, you barely talk sports. You got the Yankees. It's like the Yankees. They're 10 out in the AL East. If I'm sitting around with Giannotti talking Yankees for four hours, I'm going to stab myself in the eyes. <laughs> Jesus. Like, like, your, like your boy Guillermo, too, as I'm watching yeah. you guys. He's like, wait, have you watched any New York baseball? Are you prepping for any New <laughs> Like, what? What do you think we're going to do? Man? I watched opening day. I told Billy, who doesn't watch your show. Right. I mean, I told him he doesn't watch your show. Yeah. And what makes me so proud about... What you've done, what Carton did when he was here, is you guys proved on this station, in this market, it doesn't have to be serious, X and O's, break it all down, be outraged all the time. You guys figured out you can laugh, have fun, agitate Boomer a bit, and still get great uh, great ratings. Yeah. Which is awesome, because that's what me and Levitard are all about on our show. Uh, in fact, we figured out that once I stopped trying to be Chris Russo and started to mock Chris Russo, <laughs> that's when our show really took off. That was the ticket yes. right there. That yes. was it. Yep. Now, it is, it's amazing to me, and it's something that's sort of a testament to this place in the history. There's been a lot of guys you know, like us who have grown up loving WFAN, yes. loved Mike and the Mad Dog, wanted to get in the business because of it. And, and I ended up keeping that passion and working here and being a part of it. There's guys like Adam Shine who also were that guy, but then he ended up going to Sirius, and he never really chased it and wanted to come back here, and he's totally happy. He's killing it over at Sirius and the Mad Dog Channel. But for you, yep. with all the success you've had with Dan, I mean, to the point, national, huge podcast numbers, everything, mm -hmm. that you still are obsessed with this place. It's unbelievable. I mean, it just sucks me in. I, I want to tell you a quick story because yeah. I had a conversation with my dad like a week ago. It's so funny that this happened. But uh, I had a conversation with my pops, and we were talking about WFAM. I said, Dad, you know what? I've given it up. It's not going to happen. Like chasing that dream, Dad, I tried, and I don't care as much as I used to. Yeah. And I said, so I am done pursuing it. I'm not going to do a show there ever again. <laughs> I've done one show here. It was a Sunday night. It was sad. It was lonely. It was after Tiger won the PGA Championship. I am telling you, this station is amazing from this regard. No one knew who I was. I didn't even do my opening monologue yet. Every phone line was lit up. Oh, yeah, of course. They yeah. just want to talk to anyone. They don't care who the person is. They just want to yell about someone to anybody. Okay? And so I did that show. But a week ago, I'm telling my dad, not going to happen. FAN, not going to happen, Dad. We're done. Let's move on. And two days later, I get a text from Gio. You want to do Monday, Thursday, Friday, FAN? And I respond immediately, yes. <laughs> yeah. I am. After telling my dad for an hour at yeah. lunch, it ain't happening. It ain't <laughs> happening. But I want to thank you quickly because I have checked off just about every box that I've needed to check off personally for me. Yeah. Big time local show, highest rated show in the market, national show, one of the biggest podcasts in America, college game day. I'm a guest picker on college game day, <laughs> yeah. hosted first take, filling in for Mike and Mike. I called a final four, women's lacrosse final four. My daughter plays at Northwestern, 
And uh, and so I've I've checked off all the boxes, but I've never done drive time on WFAN. Well, here it is. And I'm telling you, there are a few things at this stage of my career that get me excited. Okay, like and and life, to be quite honest with you, uh, very few things, but nothing. Nothing comes close to getting me as excited as doing this with you for the next two days. Well, that is awesome. That's how much it means to me, and I appreciate you staying on it. Well, uh, of of course, and I appreciate you saying yes and flying in and all that stuff. I mean, you walked in like you'd been here for for 30 years. The trip has cost me $1,000 already. It's unbelievable. (laughs) (laughs) And I know there's nothing coming back my way. No, no, no. (laughs) No way. No, no, I just, I gave up trying to expense stuff. I don't even do it anymore. (laughs) They've made it so difficult. I I swear to God, I did not expense one thing from Arizona. Arizona. Really? I kept all the receipts and didn't do it because I sat down and started to do it, and I was like, F this. No, I don't want to do this. It's so difficult. They make it so hard. I know. Well, that, that's the point. Yeah, I know. Of course. No, They're I trying know. to make it difficult. You want it easy? <laughs> yeah, no, hey, no, just no, give no. Me, Here's how much I spent. Give me my money back. Right, exactly. Right. And by the way, you're, he's already on a first-name basis with the security guard down there in the five seconds that you were waiting for me to come and get you. Like, Muhammad, the yeah. man. <laughs> I know. Listen, there are going to be times over the next two days. Al's going to be looking for me. You'll be looking for me. Yeah. I'll be talking to Eddie Scazzeri. I don't care. Like, I'm going to walk around this place. It's my playground. I might be in Eskin's office begging for a job, even though I told my dad two weeks ago <laughs> and the fan ain't happening. Yeah. Uh, there's no telling where I'll be. But, well, just uh, hang around for a year. There'll be more changes. That's generally what happens. <laughs> This place, <laughs> we don't have the same lineup for more than a year and a half. Uh, all right, it is Boomer and Geo with Stu Godson for Boomer this morning.